In this video, I'll show you some of my favorite tips inside of Notion. Notion is my favorite productivity tool, so I hope you enjoy the vid. Let's start with the basics. Tip number one, dark mode. To enable dark mode in Notion, go to Settings and Members, select Appearance, and change the drop-down menu to dark. You can also hit Command-Shift-L. Now your eyes will thank you. Tip number two, quick search. To quickly search for a page, just hit Command plus P. This will pop up a quick menu that will scan all of your Notion documents. I use this one all the dang time. Tip number three, reference another page or person using the at symbol. You can link directly to another page by simply typing in the at symbol and selecting the page. You can also mention users by typing in the at symbol as well, and then selecting their name. Anytime you mention a person, they will be notified under all updates. Tip number four, create block columns. Notion allows you to organize blocks side by side. All you have to do is select the six gray dots to the left of the block or blocks you want to organize. You can now move them to create side-by-side -side columns. Tip number five, the forward slash. Instead of selecting the plus icon to create a new block, just type forward slash and type in the name of the block you want to create. This will allow you to create new sections without touching your mouse, which is much faster, I might add. Tip number six, change fonts. You can actually change the default font for a page in Notion by selecting the menu in the top right corner and selecting your font style of choice. When I'm in a classy mood, I'll switch to a serif font. Tip number seven, change your page width. The default Notion layout has very wide margins, but if you want to utilize the empty space, just go to the menu in the top right and select full width. Tip number eight, icons and covers. Unless you work at Dunder Mifflin, the default page icon in Notion is kinda boring. I find it way easier to see and organize my pages by using simple little icons that represent what's inside my pages. To set a new icon, just select the add icon button at the top of the page. You can also change the cover image to make your page feel more exciting. I often use my cover images as mood boards for the specific project I am working on. Tip number nine, viewing page updates. Did you accidentally delete some important information from your page? No problem. Just like Google Docs, you can view all updates and iterations of your page history by navigating to the ellipses at the top right and selecting page history. You can also restore your page to any previous version from this menu. Tip number 10, embedding videos. Notion allows you to embed social media links and videos from places like YouTube or Vimeo. To embed a video, just use the video embed block or simply paste a link to the video. This is a fantastic tool for organizing training videos, creating learning curriculums, or just keeping reference videos for yourself. Tip 11, favoriting important pages. I often find that I visit the same pages again and again. So instead of clicking around and navigating to the page, just click the favorite button in the top right. This will add the page to your list of favorites in the top left of the sidebar menu. Tip number 12, locking pages. Don't want someone to change your page? No problem. Select the ellipses in the top right and select lock page. Now the page can't be updated until you unlock it again. This is especially important if you work with Greg. You know, Greg. Tip 13, sharing pages with others. Want to invite somebody to look at a specific page? You can share a page with someone else by selecting share. By sharing the link, you will allow them to see the page just like a website. But if you click show link options, you can allow anyone in the world to edit, comment, or duplicate your page. You can also allow your page to be indexed and found in search engines like Google. If you want to add collaborators or individuals, you can simply type in their email. Just keep in mind that unless you specifically restrict the page, any child pages inside will become visible to anyone you share your parent page with. Tip number 14, leaving comments. If you want to leave feedback on a block, you can simply select it and choose comment. You can also select Command Shift M to do the same thing. 
In comments, you can mention people and pages from around your Notion board. Tip 15, embedding outside documents. Did you know that you can embed documents from outside resources directly into Notion? It's true, and it's pretty cool. Just type in forward slash and embed, and you will see a big list of things that you can embed, including Google Maps, Loom videos, PDFs, and more. Tip number 16, allow search indexing. A Notion workspace is essentially a website that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. To allow your Notion pages to be found by anyone, select share, show link options, and select search engine indexing. Tip number 17, a toggle list. A toggle list is a great way to consolidate lengthy pages. To create a toggle list, simply select the text you wish to be the title for the list and turn it into a toggle list. Now you can add all of your relevant blocks inside. Now it's time to take a look at a few pro tips inside of Notion. Tip number 18, creating formulas. Similar to Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, you can create formulas in your Notion tables that can automatically change numbers. For example, if you want to create a board organizing purchases of a product, you can create a table with two columns. Add a formula column at the end and follow the formatting instructions for specific tasks as you are trying to execute them. There's a lot of different formatting techniques to remember, so if you ever get lost, you can find a link to more information below this video. Tip 19, keyboard shortcuts between workspaces. If you have multiple Notion workspaces, you can quickly navigate between them by selecting command and hitting a specific number. I use this tip all the time. Tip number 20, copying heading styles. Notion heading styles can be copied and pasted into other platforms like Google Docs or Squarespace while retaining their styles. This is fantastic if you write blog posts in Notion because the styles should remain intact. Tip 21, table of contents. If you have a long page with documentation, a table of contents can be a great way to see what's going on throughout your page. To create a table of contents, simply type in the forward slash and select table of contents. The new table of contents will automatically take you to various sections throughout your page. Tip 22, duplicate blocks. There are two key ways to duplicate blocks inside of Notion. The first is by hitting Command D. The second is to select your blocks, hold down Option, and drag them where they need to go. Tip 23, color coding blocks. I like to color code my pages and blocks depending on my project. For example, if I am editing an article, I might color the sections that are good green and the sections that need improvement yellow and the sections that should be removed red. But it all depends on your own organization style. Tip 24, date reminders. You can set reminders for yourself in Notion. It's true. Just find the information you want to be reminded of and type in at symbol and the word remind with the day and time you want to be reminded. If you want to remind a fellow team member, just do at and their name next to the reminder. Tip 25, export pages. You can export entire Notion pages as PDFs, offline HTML files, or CSVs for Excel or Google Sheets. To export a page, just go to the ellipses in the top right and select export. You can now select your export method of choice from the menu. Tip 26, exporting CSVs. Sometimes you may want to take a table from Notion and bring it into a tool like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Just find the table you want to export, select the ellipses, and choose export as markdown and CSV. The file can now be opened in your spreadsheet tool of choice. Tip 27, importing CSVs. You can also bring in tables from other databases. To do this, just select import from the drop-down menu and select CSV. Once imported, you will see your new database on the page. Tip 28, hiding properties. If you want to hide a property from your database, choose properties. This is a great tool for customizing linked databases to your liking. Tip 29, adding emojis. Unlike other word processing apps, you can't simply right click and add an emoji in Notion. Instead, all you have to do is hit colon and then type in the name of the emoji you want to use. You can also select Control Command Space on a Mac or Windows key plus period on a PC 
to do the exact same thing. Tip number 30, favorite pages from other workspaces. Favoriting is a great way to save pages from a single workspace, but what if you wanna quickly access a page on another workspace in the sidebar? Well, to do that, simply move the page from the workspace to your primary workspace, favorite it, and then move it back to the original workspace. You'll now be able to jump between specific pages on different workspaces from a single sidebar. Tip 31, link to a specific Notion block. Just like linking to a page, you can link to a specific block on a page by selecting the block and choosing copy link. You can now directly navigate to that block via the link. Tip 32, toggle between Notion pages. Having multiple Notion windows open at the same time is essential for doing quick work. I'll often snap my windows using a tool like the Better Snap tool so they equally fill up my screen. But if you want to toggle between your windows, just hit Command and tilde on a Mac or Alt and Tab on a PC. Tip 33, link databases from other workspaces. Databases can link beyond a single workspace. I'll say that again because it's really important. Databases can link beyond a single workspace. To create a linked database, just copy the link to the database and paste it into your workspace of choice. Now you can see any updates made throughout both workspaces. In this next section, I'll share a few tips for organizing and optimizing your life inside of Notion. Tip 34, create a home page. Just like a website, you should organize your Notion dashboard with a home page that will allow you to access your important links around your Notion workspace without having to navigate into sub pages or muddy up your sidebar. Notion has a decent personal home page template that you can use, but I always recommend customizing it to your liking. Mine includes my goals, reading list, vacation plans, finances, and more. Tip 35, keeping a journal. I found that keeping a journal is one of the best ways to start my day and de-stress. My favorite way to keep a journal is to create a calendar and add a field for the date. I will then type in each daily entry. You can also take it one step further and add in checkboxes for habits you'd like to create, like working out or drinking water. By filtering in your database, you can tell how well you are doing in each habit. Tip 36, create a reading list. I like to create a reading list in a database and tag the books based on which key areas of my life the book will help me grow in. You can find a list of my categories below this video. This is a great way to make sure you aren't bogging yourself down with too many books in a specific category. If you're like me, you may read too many business books so it can help you to focus on other key areas of your life. Tip 37, create a goals chart. I also recommend creating a goals chart so you can see what you are currently working towards. Again, think about key areas of your life and make sure that you are always trying to improve in each category. Set a smarter goal. That's a goal that's specific, measurable, actionable, risky, time keyed, exciting, and relevant. You should be excited to achieve each one of your goals. Tip 38, Notion Web Clipper. There's a great Chrome extension called Notion Web Clipper that will automatically import pages from the internet into your Notion database of choice. Just install the extension, click the icon on the page you want to save, and choose your database. I like using this for saving videos, articles, and products I wish to buy. You can also set up a status property so that after you read an article, for example, it will automatically be filtered off your list. In this next section, we're going to be talking about a few tips for using Notion for work. Tip 39, use page templates. Templates are one of the most powerful features inside of Notion. Templates allow you to create default page styles that can quickly be created and used. I use templates to create meeting notes, content checklists, and more. You can find Notion's template library by selecting the templates button on a new page. Here you'll find templates for everything from engineering roadmaps to reading goals. Tip number 40, quick to-do list. You can create a template button on a page that can quickly be used to recall anything from checklists to tables. To create a template button, first create the thing you want to be generated from the template button. This can be text, checklists, spreadsheets, or whatever you want. Next, select the template button from the block menu. 
Give your template a name and drag your blocks into the template section. Once you've added in your template, select close. Now you can simply recall your template by hitting the name of the template you just created. Tip number 41, templates in databases. Database templates are perfect if you organize things like meeting notes or content checklist in a single database. To create a template in a database, just create a new document in the database. Click open to see the page inside. Select the create a template button. Now, just like before, create all of the blocks you wish to see. Once your template is complete, give it a name and click away. Now, when you create a new page in the database, you will see the template option that you can click. Tip number 42, databases in templates. When you create a new template, you can embed a database. So for example, if I had a database with task, I can copy a link to the database. When I'm creating a new template on a new page, I can paste a link to reference to the original linked database. Then I can filter the new database to my liking. Now, whenever you activate the new template, the database will be linked inside. Any changes to the original database will be reflected in the created page from the template. Tip 43, task boards. Task boards are an important way to make sure all of your work, chores, and responsibilities are getting done. There are a ton of different methods out there for creating task lists, but here is my favorite. In Notion, I'll create a new page called All Task. I'll then create an inline database and include the following sections. A status section with the options of not started, in progress, complete, blocked and waiting, deleted, and quality check. Each task will be assigned a certain status based on its progress. A date section that says deadline slash timeline, a priority section that has five levels starting with a number, number one, low priority, number two, mid priority, number three, high priority, number four, fire emoji or communication, and number five, five minute fix. A person column that says responsible, you will assign your task to whomever makes sense here. I also like to have a section for created time and last edited. Now you can edit and assign your task in a single place. Once complete, sort your task by priority with five being at the top and one being at the bottom. Whenever I sit down to work, I will start at the top and work my way down. At the end of each day, I will reassign tasks for the next day. It also helps to filter your tasks so that completed tasks are removed. I'll typically create a new page with a linked database and sort by last edited to see a list of my most recent completed tasks. No matter how small the task, I always recommend adding it to your board as you'll be able to see exactly how much work you completed by the end of each day by creating a filtered view. This system has worked flawlessly for me and I think you'll enjoy it. Tip 44, filtering on specific person's needs. This is an expert level tip, so pay attention. If you work on a team, an overwhelming task board can be, well, overwhelming. Instead, what I like to do is simply organize each task by assigning responsibilities to each person. Once assigned, I'll create a new page for each person and copy and paste the linked database to the new page. I will now filter based on that person's name. Now, if a new task is created and a person is tagged, they will automatically see the task on their board. I'll typically take this one step further and filter any completed task so that it is removed from the person's board. Tip 45, task templates. If you're like me, you probably have reoccurring tasks for your job or life, including writing weekly newsletters, checking support tickets, or contacting clients. If you've already set up a personal task board, you can easily create templates for weekly or daily tasks by creating a similar board below your main task board feed. I like to pre-tag my reoccurring tasks so I can simply copy and paste them into my board. I'll typically have one board for my reoccurring daily task and one board for my reoccurring weekly task. Tip 46, meeting templates. Meetings are one of the biggest time wasters at work. In fact, 67% of workers say they spend too much time in meetings. I agree, meetings are generally terrible. So to save time, I suggest creating a meeting calendar. To create a calendar, simply create a new page and select the template button. Notion has a built-in meeting template. Go ahead and select it. The meeting templates in Notion are okay, but I will typically expand on it by adding in a date property called date of meeting. 
This will allow you to pre-create meeting notes and assign meetings for certain days. Always make sure you have an agenda and talking points before you start a meeting. Disorganized meetings lead to wasted time. During the week, if you think of things to chat about in future meetings, just go ahead and create a meeting card and add in your talking points. Here's a super pro tip. I'll typically edit my weekly meeting template to include a filtered board that includes completed task, upcoming task, and an embed of my KPI data. Creating meeting notes now only takes me a couple seconds rather than half an hour. Tip 47, get pro templates. I've organized my entire life and business using Notion and I can't be happier. From achieving goals to organizing project boards, Notion has dramatically changed my life for the better. That's why I've decided to give you the exact templates that I use so you can organize your life and achieve the success you've always dreamed of. You'll find a link below this video. If you've ever wanted to launch an online business from scratch utilizing easy to use tools, check out The Curious Millionaire. Our online adventure will show you how to test and launch a thriving modern business using the latest tools and techniques. If you know of any other awesome Notion templates, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. We have a newsletter and we'd be happy to share the templates with our community. And also feel free to subscribe if you want more productivity tips and inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.